I believe. Yeah. Spir a spiritual power is coming, man. It's starting of the elect man, you know. Certain of us are going to get it, you know. I know every brother wants to get them. Not all of us are going to be, you know, blessed to get those. But, you know, hey, and if you don't get them, hey, pray the next man in your camp gets them. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, because if he gets them, we all get it, right? All right. Lord's got this thing, man. Uh, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 29. I'll start in 29. It says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 30. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord, Yahweh, again talking about his men first and foremost, it says, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. You might have a brother that is trying to escape from a danger, and he literally, literally is going to be able to run. I'm just using this as an example. He's going to be able to run from, let's say, Columbia, South Carolina, where I am right now, to uh, New York City, man, and not and not be faint. Come on, man. The Lord is going to do this. All right? The Lord is going to do this. His, his election will be protected in this day. All right? But again, everyone else... Man, it's gonna be it's gonna be miserable, man. This is gonna be a miserable time. Alright. Back to second Exodus 15. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The house shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Alright, I um I read verse 19 so I can repeat myself. Verse 20. Behold, saith God, and most high power, how I will I will call together all the kings of the earth. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. That's enough on that though. But let's stick to let's stick to um or let's like slide it. Let's skip to Second Ezra 16. And we're gonna start at the top. Book of Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 1, verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, woe be unto thee, e Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Be well, your children, and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. So again, woe is coming. Your destruction is at hand. And this, these things are written down through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua thousands of years ago. And now they are speaking. Because now we are at the appointed time of where the vision is starting to speak. Okay, because these these men are they had visions. They see they saw through the spirit. They saw these things coming, man. You know. When John the Revelator was on the Isle of Patmos, he saw he saw the times we're in right now. He saw he saw World War One, you know. He saw World War Two. He saw World War Three coming. Okay, he's seen the FEMA camps. He knows about that. He saw the guillotine. That the prophets saw horrible things in their visions, and things that made them sick. All right. And again, now is the time, man. All right, we're at that time. Okay, where the the vision is speaking, man. It says, A sword is sent upon you, verse 3, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Nobody. Because who's sending it? Who's sending these things? Yahweh Basim Yahushua. So you ain't going to stop it. How are you going to stop it? You know, what are you going to do? Pick up your AK 47? You know, a lot of you Jakes that are out there prepping for, for this uh, civil war that's coming, for these troubling times coming, how are you going to stop? Esau with a couple of uh, AK-47s? Nah, man. You go just like you ain't gonna stop. This, just like uh, you Christians ain't gonna stop these prophecies from being fulfilled. All right, it says plagues are sent unto you. Verse five. And what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an hungry lion in the wood, or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it hath begun to, to burn? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer? The mighty Lord sent it to plagues, verse 8. And who is he that can drive them away? Right, see, I just said that. It's the mighty Lord that's sending these plagues. You how about some you outside? So you, you're not going to be able to drive. You're not going to be able to do a damn thing to drive this away or stop this. You ain't going to stop this, man. Apostle Ramlob did a video earlier in the week uh, talking about, you know, you can't stop the prophecy train once it's left the station. You know, uh, uh, dealing with you clowns, uh, Abu, uh, Sam Shimon. And uh, no, no, no class Malone. All right. Yeah, man, you can't stop these things because it's, it's the mighty Lord sending them. Okay. 
A fire shall go forth from his wrath, verse 9, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? That's right, man. So he's gonna, if you're not on his right side when he comes back, you're going to be beaten into powder, man. All right? You're going to be beaten into powder. All right? You're going to wind up in a lake of fire, man, which is right here in America. You're going to wind up over here in a lake of fire having to feel death by pain, man. All right? It says... The earth quaketh, verse 12, and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep, and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also, before the Lord and before the glory of his power. That's right, man. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be so much destruction. It's going to be this, you know, the, 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 the animals, the seas are going to be getting, you know, rocked, you know. The, the earth is going to reel to and fro, like the scripture says, as, as a drunkard. Okay? That's what, you know, those uh, those warheads, those nuclear warheads that John the Revelator seen in Revelation, the ninth chapter. That's what, what is it, what did he see? He said a number of them was 200,000, 200 million. Okay, not saying there's literally 200 million missiles per se, but each missile has a, has a multiple warheads in it, man, on it. All right? It's going to be crazy, man, the destruction, you know? That's why it talks about you know, how, how it, uh, the righteous shall scarcely be saved, right? Because the Lord's going to uh, come back during the midst of World War III, all right? It says, For strong is his right hand, and it bendeth the bow, verse 13, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss, talking about the nukes, all right? When they, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, okay? Now, for you clowns out here, you false teachers, you false prophets that don't believe in the ICBMs. What arrow do you know that can be shot from one end of the earth to the other? You know, what bow and arrow is there on the market today that you can shoot, all right, from one end of the earth to the other and it hit its target? Um, come on, man. The arrows are the, are, are the missiles, man. You know, they're called swords in the scriptures. They're called, they're called uh, uh, arrows, all right? World War Three, man. Verse 14, Behold, the plagues are sent. They shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled. They shall not be put out until they consume the foundation of the earth. Like as, because all this thing, all this thing, all these things, Salakia, have already taken place in the spiritual realm, man. We just, we're just in the physical realm and we're waiting for them to play out. All right? It says, The fire is kindled. It shall not be put out until they consume the foundation of the earth. Verse 16, like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? So the prophet Ezra knew he was going to be back on the scene to receive his reward as a righteous prophet. Okay, and even, even the prophets talk about woe is me, woe is me. Who shall deliver me from these, uh, um, from who shall deliver me like in those days? That, that in itself proves reincarnation, man. Reincarnation is scriptural. You know, the prophets have to be back and standing in their lot. Uh, Daniels, it says that in Daniels. Matter of fact, let me get it. It also said John the Revelator would have to come back and prophesy. So, you know, hey, but you know, you got to be spiritual. You got to be a spiritual person, spiritual man to uh, receive that. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 13. But go thy way, Daniel. Go thou thy way till the end be. Salakia. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. We're in the end. Of, we're at the end of the days. Okay? So Daniel's going to be back in his lot. What was Daniel's lot? A prophet. Okay? And again, John the Revelator. Um, it said John the Revelator would have to come back. Right? Revelation chapter 10 verse 11 and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings okay there's no record of that ever happening John the revelator died on the Isle of Patmos all right in an old age at an old age so you know not not that this is a lesson on reincarnation but hey you know Ezra all the prophets knew 
that there's, there's, they seen it. I mean, they seen it through the spirit. So they 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 knew this time was going to be horrific, man, horrible. You know, that's why it's called a, a, a day like no other, man, or a time like no other. And they knew that they were going to they, they were going to have to have Yahweh by some Yahweh on their side, man. Otherwise, how how are you going to make it out of here? How are you going to make it out? How are you going to be redeemed, man? Who's coming to get you if Yahweh is not coming back? It said he's going to ride into Egypt on a swift cloud. Hold on. Again, a cloud talking about a chariot. Hold on, man. Let me get that. I hadn't brought this chapter out in a minute, honestly. You can bring this one out every day, though. Definitely. Isaiah 19. Yup. I'm just going to get right to the point. Chapter 19 and verse 1. It says, The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord Yah, Basimia Shah, rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved in his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. That's right, man. So, hey, again, Yah Shah is coming. You know, talks about, you know, in Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, you know, who is this that cometh from Edom, all right, with dyed garments from Bozrah? All right, Bozra, another another code, code word for uh, Edom, America. Okay. And Salaki, I'm looking for. There's another scripture I was looking for, and I thought it was in toward the end of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, for those of you who don't believe in Yahweh Shai, tell me who this is. Isaiah 19 and verse 20. Chapter 19 and verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord, Yahweh, because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a Savior and a great one. And he shall deliver them. Who is that Savior that's going to be sent? See, we know there's no power beside the Most High, Yahweh. All right? Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai. Yahweh, Shai is going to accomplish that. The Lord is sending Yahweh, Shai, man. A Savior. Okay? So when you... When you uh, Old Testament only Israelites talking about there's no God beside me. Yeah, there's no other God beside or other than Yahweh. All right. But he has a, a, a physical savior that's coming, man, in an angelic body. Okay. Yahweh Messiah is only begotten son. All right. So these things are coming to pass, man, quickly. This third woe's coming. All right. These plagues are getting ready to consume you people out here. All right, so I mentioned this um, a little while ago, so I'll close it on this. Because I, I referenced this earlier. All right, this is Romans chapter 13. All right, what is it time for you to do? Now that you know all these things that are coming and you've been knowing about them because you've been, again, you've been hearing this you know, this has been noised abroad now, you know, for decades, man. All right. This is uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So now it's now, you know, the time now it's high time to wake out of sleep. All right. Hey. Yeah, like Yahweh Shai said, you know, bring it out all the time. Like Yahweh Shai said, you know, he said, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what you got to do. You got to turn. You got to do it now. You got to seek the Lord now while he may be found. You know, pursuing to Isaiah, the 55th chapter, and the 6th verse. The Lord willing, he was edified through the Spirit. And now with that, I want to say Shalom. But before I do that, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors are due unto the venerable apostles of the great millstone, along with the elder bishops who rule well salutations peace and blessing to the bi after without a house of david <laughs>